Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hangout with CERN. We're really glad to be back. It's been some time since we talked to you, but we've been very, very busy. I guess you've seen in the news there's been a lot of uh, results coming out, and they will continue to come out from CERN. But right now, I'm here to talk to you about something very interesting. We have something called Beamline for Schools. I bet you didn't know that was coming to your school. We have Beamlines coming to your school. What is this all about? I'm with James, who's sitting here in the LHC, and Hans Peter, who's sitting out here in the universe. Don't float away, all right? You guys stick around here. And we also have Kristen over on the social media, who's going to be helping us out, answering questions, giving us questions. Uh, and uh, I have a lot of questions. What is this all about? Maybe I can start with James, and you can tell us where do beam lines from school come from, and what is it? Sure. Well, this is, I think this is a very exciting initiative, and it came from um, a colleague of ours called um, Christoph Remser, who went our direction and said, what can we do with our fixed target beam lines at CERN? Came up with the idea, why don't we dedicate one for schools to use? Now, CERN is very much associated with the LHC, but there's much, much more to CERN than the LHC. We have a lot of accelerators here. We have a lot of um, beam lines. And what this is, is you, instead of accelerating beams and colliding them into each other, mm -hmm. you accelerate beams to extract them and you collide them to a target. And these are very important for a whole range of research projects. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, this idea sat around for a little while and then we started thinking, you know, next year is our 60th anniversary at CERN. Mm -hmm. We're going to be celebrating that. And this is a great occasion to trial this idea. So we thought we'll do it with a competition. We'll open it as a competition. We'll invite schools to see, you know, say, here's a beam line. You can use it. It's yours for a week. Mm -hmm. Give us your ideas. So it's a competition. Various various schools or classes can can compete. They can make a proposal. Exactly. Yeah, that's the idea. So the idea is that it's um, groups of school kids who can be from the same class or several classes or several schools, but they have to have some reason for being together. So there might be a cosmos mm -hmm. science club or, or something like that. Okay. And we want them to come up with a with an idea. Now, we're not expecting them to come up with you know proposals for physics experiments that are going to win the Nobel Prize next year. What we want to see is well-motivated people who we think could, could, could profit a lot from doing this. And then nine of them will get to come here, mm -hmm. um, run the experiment for a week. They'll be divided between a number of locations at CERN, including the control rooms where the beams actually start and are controlled, they're accelerated. Uh, another control room which actually will guide their beam to their experiment, and then the experiment control room itself. Um, okay. We can have a maximum of nine people here for that, but the teams can be bigger because there'll be opportunities for us to link in uh, virtually and online with, uh, with people back in our classroom. Okay, so each each team, the, the, the team that will win will have up to, up to nine people who will be here. They will come here, but the team, you know, they, they, there can be more people involved. Another thing that's very important is that um, you know, people coming here have to be 16 at least on the day that they first start there. Uh, their, okay, their so they have to be 16 years old when they, when they come here. Yeah. And, uh, and they can come here, and, they, and they're going to have to, I guess, apply to do this. So how are we going to decide who gets to come here? Well, we, we wanted to make it as close to the real experience as possible. So there is a, a set way of um, accepting experiments at CERN. Mm -hmm. um, you know, first of all, the collaboration will come together, and they'll submit a, a letter of intent. They'll say, you know, we have this idea. We'd like to do this experiment. Mm -hmm. And then the next stage is to, to, to develop a proposal and submit that. So we've got those two stages in the application process here. So for us, the, the letter of intent stage, this, this, we would really like to do this. Mm -hmm. um, that's open until the 31st of January. And all we're expecting there really is a tweet. We want 140 wow. characters why we want to do this. Well, that would have uh, been much easier for the LHC. A, a tweet <laughs> of intent. We're expecting a tweet of in, intent Fantastic. By, I mean, by, by the end of January. Maybe we'll change the whole culture of sin. I think so. Uh, I think uh, so. Even, even I could make an experiment. But, but we're, expecting, we're expecting something interesting. And it has to be, I think motivation is the prime factor. Yeah, so I mean, obviously you're not going to be able to say much in that. The purpose of that is you say, we're interested in doing this, we want to register our interest in doing this, and, and of course behind the 140 characters you'll tell us who you are and where you come from, what the school is, and who your In 140 who your characters? Are. No, that comes as well. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> 140 characters is just why us. That's, uh, that's what that's about. Okay. okay. Um, and then after that, um, teams will have uh, until the 31st of March to submit us 1,000 words. Okay. And we're looking for, you know, if you've got some ideas of what you might do with this beam line, and, and if you look at our website, there's a lot of information there. There's a lot of details, a lot of it's technical, a lot of it's not. We've even got a fully laid out experiment that you can just look at and decide that's what you want to do. What we're really looking for is, is motivation. Okay. So okay. that's it. A thousand words in a one-minute video. So we're not looking to place 
the Nobel laureates of this year with new no Nobel laureates of the following year. We're, we're looking for motivation to start. Exactly. Year, okay. if, if the Nobel Prize comes along, we won't, we won't object. Yeah, we, we won't object to that. <laughs> Hans Peter, are you going to compete? No. No? I want you to compete. Okay. It's a, it's, it's a school. It's a young school. If I would compete, no, I can coach, I can help. Uh -huh. That's uh, I see my role in helping that all these people and uh, for schools come to reality. Mm -hmm. It's it's up to everybody out there worldwide. Every team of, of school students, school kids, there's a teacher, they can form up a team. The team does not necessarily need to be one in one single class. They can form a team which is a bit more more spread out. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. this helps motivation, if this helps the project. Okay. Can be a single class if this is a good setting. Uh, that we are open. We have many, many ways of what ta what you would accept as being an established team. Mm -hmm. But it has to be a team that comes up with a splendid idea. We want to measure this. This great particle beam of protons, pions, kaons, muons, electrons, uh -huh. and their antiparticles uh -huh. with energies from 0.5 to 10 giga electron volts, which is, uh -huh. of course, small compared to the LHC, but it's still. These are big beams. These mm -hmm. are really big beams. Uh, if this one can do interesting, studying interesting phenomena, uh -huh. and that's what we are looking for. Come up with ideas. What what would you want to do with that? Do something you can it. take protons, 10 GeV, shoot them on a target, mm -hmm. measure them, measure them on your detector that you may have built yourself, mm -hmm. measuring the impact in certain materials. Mm -hmm. Seeing what comes out behind, can you have transmutation? Can you create new particles uh -huh. with this? So, there are plenty of things you can uh, can do. I mean, this this is the head of, of physics not so long ago <laughs> that we were doing this. We were we were hit bombarding targets and looking at the target at the what came out of that, the remnants of the collisions, and, and measuring them. That's how a lot of particle physics yeah, came yeah, about. A, a ten GeV beam did a state of the art a few decades ago. Mm -hmm. So that's a. Uh, I think it's important to say also that there are still state-of-the-art experiments using fixed target beams. In, in fact, right next to this beam line is one of, one of the most unusual experiments that's done today, the, the powder mm -hmm. experiment, looking at, um, oh, yeah. at how ionizing radiation, so cosmic rays coming from space, they affect do. the formation of clouds in the atmosphere. So right. they're still, you know, you're, you're right there in a real research environment. Okay, yeah. so they do have a chance to do something very fascinating and something, something new. Um, why don't we move over to Kristen? Uh, Kristen, you might have some questions that have come in from the social media. I do, I do. Maybe just on our topic. So Maria from Twitter asks, how much can we change the experimental setup at the East Hall? Uh, is there a possibility, Steve, to slow down the particle beam? Can we slow down the beam? Yeah. And I guess we can choose the energy, perhaps. We can choose the energy between 0.5 GeV and 10 GeV. Okay. But if you take a proton, uh -huh. which has a mass of 1 GeV roughly, mm -hmm. and then you add kinetic energy of 0.5 GeV, this will still be a highly relativistic proton. Uh -huh. It will not be at the speed of light, but at the considerable fraction of speed of light. Okay, okay, okay. So if the plan was to see if you can run alongside the protons, catch up to them, it's not going to work. We can't form <laughs> dynamics, but you can choose the energy that you have. And we saw, I think we saw the, um, the experimental setup uh, where there's there's a variety of different tools that you can use, right? You you have um, you have something. We're not going to go into details, but what's this thing called a Cherenkov? Is that, is that something that they can use? And you say, well, I want oh, two Cherenkovs in a, in a oh, absolutely. If in you a want a coke or something, what, what do you no, think? no, uh, Cherenkov. Think with this is something that helps you identify particles. Okay, that's that's all that matters for the moment. When when a, when a particle traverses this Cherenkov device, mm -hmm. Cherenkov device. Then you can uh, figure out is this a proton, a pion, or a kaon? Okay. Depending on the experimental setup you're in, this helps you doing that. Okay. Okay. So you have you have a variety of things you can do. Yes, you can change things. I think is the answer. Uh, and you can put in different targets to produce different particles, and then you can identify them with with the various uh, items inside. Them. Yeah. I mean, what, what we what we proposed is is a basic experimental setup. So you can come along and you can just use that. And there are certain things here, static items like the target. Mm -hmm. Or there's a there's a thing labeled the absorber there which will absorb particles, so you can actually stop protons if you want to. Okay. 
Um, and these things are relatively easy to change, but there are a number of other detector elements. And if you if you if you look into all the details there, you might decide that you want to rearrange them in a different way. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, I mean, just suggest your, your idea, and um, we will tell you whether we think that's something that's useful okay. or not. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so I have this. Well, I have this friend who said he's going to the Vatican. He, he asked me if I could get some anti matter for him, <laughs> and I, I probably probably can't get that much. You yeah, have to wait. That's the problem. The answer is yeah, but it will take us. If, if it's the same friend, I think it is. And uh -huh. He wants the amount, but I think he wants it. That name's Tom. In, yeah, yeah. yeah. Two hundred fifty million years. Two hundred fifty million years. Stuff. It's going to be a long yeah. experiment. So we probably won't <laughs> accept something that's going to last that long. What? Then, what? <laughs> whatever we do, the experiment has to be. Finished within one to two weeks. That's within one to two weeks. There's a limiting factor there. Yeah. So, so I do want to mention one thing is that, is that we're going to have some more uh, hangouts uh, about this uh, in different languages. So for those of you who just don't understand a thing that I'm saying right now, we're going to, we're going to have them. The next one's going to be Thursday en français. Uh, the following Tuesday, how do you say in Italian? In Italian. Uh, <laughs> huh? Germany. Italiano. 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 Yeah, Italiano is next, next Tuesday. And then Espanol on, on Thursday the 12th, and we're going to have German on Tuesday the 17th. Okay. Deutsch. Deutsch. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there you go. So you have a variety. So if you don't understand a thing I'm saying, it might not be because you don't understand English. It could just be me. But let's go on and ask Kristen, who I'm sure you're going to understand, who might have some more questions from social media. Yeah, so Alex, well, he doesn't have a question, but he says, well, experimental proposals have to be longer than a tweet. Mm -hmm. So maybe we could clear that up. Okay, so let's clear that up. The tweet is just the initial tweet yeah. of intent. Follow would now be followed up by something longer. Yeah, so then that's, you know, registration, the tweet of intent is open until the 31st of January. Then people have got to the end of March to submit their 1,000-word proposal, okay. along with a one-minute video. Um, there'll be a committee of people looking at those, and then the shortlist will go to the what we call the uh, SPSC, which is the uh, the committee that selects okay. experiments mm -hmm. for this particular part of the CERN accelerator complex. So mm -hmm. these experimental proposals are going to go through the same committee that expects that that, that, that accepts or rejects all the other proposals. Okay, very so good. So the SPSC, the SPSC, the SPS committee will look at it. So you will have a thousand words uh, and a one minute. Yeah. Video that you'll be able to submit to give your full explanation of what exactly what it is that you want to do. Now you'll have until the end of March to submit. So the tweet is really just to register, essentially. Okay. Uh, more questions. We must have more questions. Yes, we do. Maria from Twitter asks if there's any kind of possibility to get financial support for their project. Oh, financial. What is she planning to do? <laughs> <laughs> But James? The prize is the visit to CERN, so all the expenses for the visit to CERN um, and the experiment are going to be covered. But um, in terms of developing the proposal, we don't have financial support for that. Okay. So we are going to cover the visit to CERN. Absolutely, yeah. And I think one, one more thing that's important to say is that uh, Hans-Peter here represents a rather wonderful group of people called the International Particle Physics Outreach Group, who have mm -hmm. members in uh, a, a very wide number of countries, all of CERN's member states have more. And um, they are agreeing to help people. So if you send us questions, although your proposals have to come in in the official languages of CERN, that's English or French, uh, you can get a range of other languages by writing, by looking up who your local IPOG contact is and talking to them, and they'll be happy to help you. Absolutely. That's a, that's a very important point, uh, James. When you look about the documentation that is provided on the web for this Beamline for School project, somewhere you find uh, a web link, IPOC, IPPOG. That stands for the International Particle Physics Outreach Group. And in there, you see who, are, who is a member, who is your local coach in your country, in your local language. So contact him, send, send his people emails. Say, we want to participate. We have to explain it idea. How can we do that? What, we need to, what is our next step? Uh, I think everybody in IPOC is now eager in getting emails from you from if you want to, copy, uh, to participate. This competition. Excellent. So our experts are standing by, waiting Absolutely. by, waiting by their their emailers, which we usually are anyway, waiting by our emailers, and they're and they're ready to help you out. So we do have people. IPOG covers a large area. Uh, I stands for international. So really, yeah. we will find someone who can help you out. And even if it's not exactly your country, but at least the language would match. Don't be shy contacting these. 
Yeah, the, the email might take a couple microseconds longer there to get there. Well, microseconds for particles, that's long. Yeah, <laughs> it, can, it can be long, but we, you will definitely get help for this. So, so let's see, you know, so we've covered when it's going to be. Well, when, is, when exactly will it start, the, the beam? Well, we, we will negotiate. They come, but we're looking to somewhere between July and September next year. In July and September of next year. And we'll be celebrating, by the way, the 60th, the whole year long. So this will be one of the important parts of our celebration, 60 years of CERN. So there, there must, are there more questions out there? Facebook, Twitter? We do. We do have one. Interesting question for Molly, because she asked, how do you determine the quantum spin of a particle? So I don't know. Do we didn't want to discuss that here. <laughs> How do we determine the quantum? That sounds like a, a one for another hangout. Yes, maybe. Yeah, okay. A quick answer. <laughs> yeah. Quantum <laughs> has something to do with angular momentum. So how something spins around. And the angular momentum in physics is a conserved quantity. Mm -hmm. What you can do if such a, a spinning particle or a non-spinning particle like this goes, when that decays, it decays into new particles and they have to carry somehow the initial angular momentum with them because mm -hmm. it's a conserved quantity, so it has to continue to grab on. Mm -hmm. So when you measure the decay particles and measure the angular correlation among those two, you can tell what was the spin of the original particle. So that's interesting. Now, can we give them something that is just something that they could think about for writing up a proposal? Do you think there are polari are there polarized beams in the SPS? I'm not sure. Yeah, yes. Is. Yeah, I don't know about polarized beams. They'll be, they'll be, it'd be interesting to sort of think about as, as an experiment here. And you can always add that to a proposal. Could her question be answered with the beam line that they have? Yeah, that's 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 what I'm thinking. Yeah. No, what you could thinking. do is you're hitting the beam on a target, uh -huh. and on impact you're creating new particles, uh -huh. and you can measure these new particles uh, because they are either stable and you measure them directly. Uh -huh. Or they instable, you measure the decay product of those. Uh -huh. uh, measuring the decay products, you could probably determine the, the quantum numbers of the very okay. short lived intermediate particle that you produced at the impact of your beam into a target. Okay, so I, I suggest we don't give them the answers here. There's something to think about. Maybe try to write it up in a proposal of how you could go about uh, determining that. So, uh, I'll say, uh, Kristen, do you, we have more, more questions? We have two or? more questions there. Okay, two more questions. So, Maybe the first, um, are the Hangouts recorded and available for later review? Our, our Hangouts are always recorded, right? Yeah, available on CERN's YouTube channel. And our YouTube channel, and uh, yeah, and they, they're on the YouTube channel. And you can go see other, we have Hangouts from the past year. It was our first year of Hangout with CERN this past year. And we will be back. We're going to cover, this is, we find this the most important is, is the um, Beamline for Schools. So we're going to be talking about that for the next few weeks. But starting next year, we hope to get going our regular hangouts and talk about topical subjects again soon. I have both the producer and director here who are they're 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 thinking about it. We're we're gonna we're gonna be back. We'll be back. <laughs> so one, you said you had two questions. Oh yeah, one more question is so maybe we can we, we talked about this, but there's another question from Amir on uh, YouTube who asks: Is it possible for groups from outside the Euro, from outside Europe to participate? Mm -hmm. Maybe we could just, we just address that again. Did, I mean, do, do, does CERN know boundaries? We don't. We, we, don't, we don't know boundaries. We don't, we, you can be from anywhere. Anywhere. Um, Martians included. We haven't had any yet, sent any proposals, but um, uh, there are absolutely no limits at CERN. Uh, we have, you know, I'm, look at me, right? I'm American. I'm, I'm here in the middle of Europe, and they haven't kicked me out yet. It's going to happen, I'm sure, but not yet. So yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, I think anybody from anywhere is is uh, really welcomed uh, to send us a proposal and to come participate. Okay. So, what did I miss? Should we recap the deadlines. Should we recap the deadlines? Okay, January thirty first. That's right. Your tweet of intent. Okay, they can find all of these deadlines somewhere, right? We have a we have a website that has all of this up there. So maybe that's the most important thing. Let's take a look here. Uh, go to the CERN site of uh, Competition Beamline Schools. Uh, there's also there's a there's a hashtag BL4S, which is what they'll be using when they do their, their tweet. BL4S, obviously Beamline for Schools. And uh, so the 31st of January, you get your tweet in, and then the 31st 
of March, we'll need your thousand words uh, plus your one minute video, uh, your complete proposal, your technical proposal, which will go to the SPSC. And then sometime between July and September, well, we'll select the team, I'm sorry, we'll select the team in May, and then sometime between July and September, we'll work out with you, your school, your group, when you can come over here, and we'll take care of bringing you over here. And, uh, and I'll buy you a cup of coffee, okay? Or a Coke, whatever you like. Okay? All right. Anything else, James? Just, I think, you know, as I said at the beginning, I think this is a fantastic opportunity for people. And, um, you know, my experience of CERN is that over the years I've been working here in communications, I've interacted with people of all ages, and the young ones always come up with the best ideas. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of proposals come in over the next few months. Yeah, me too. Thank you. You're going to be helping out, right? Well, figure out who is your local coach by the IPOC memberships. Just, you find someone who speaks your language, who can help in your own language or many languages you can offer. Just build a team, contact your local IPOC uh, representative, and submit the proposal. Exactly. All right. Learn some particle physics. Thanks for coming and joining us. And uh, if you didn't, as I said, if you didn't understand a thing I was saying, come back and join us for the other language uh, hangouts, which will be coming up soon. Bye bye. 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 bye.